Hi guys. Hey Carl. Hi Carl. Hey. Hi, Carl. How's it going, Carl? Hi Carl. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Yeah, I have kind of a question and kind of a practice update. Go for it. So I feel like the distance between me being glad and me being me being like satisfied and me being happy is like getting getting bigger. So like I can be satisfied without like feeling joy and pity and stuff. And so I can just be satisfied, but without like all the positive emotions on top. And sometimes I feel like I'm more satisfied when I'm kind of like depressed, just because it's less effort than like because it takes like a like a, a little bit of effort in order to generate like the happy sensations and the positive emotions. Oh, I've heard, so I'm I've kind heard of wondering this before from you, Robert. <laughs> oh God, am, am I allowed to like suffer if I'm more satisfied? Because it's less effort. Because it takes like a couple. It takes like a couple like seconds or a couple minutes of effort to like. You don't need to suffer. You don't need. You don't need to ask. You don't need to ask permission. <laughs> Well, okay. I think you're, I think you're a little bit confused about what being satisfied is, because if you're, if you're suffering, then you're not satisfied. You're saying like, oh, I'm satisfied, but I'm I am, I am, time. I'm as, I'm more satisfied than I would be if I exerted effort to try and make myself feel. No, happy. It, that's not how it works. You're either satisfied or you're not. <laughs> I mean, bro. Okay. Well, so, so, so do I just keep so like grinding I until? Think, I don't think you need to put so much effort in. But I remember you asked you asked the same thing like three or four weeks ago. Yeah. Look at you, Joe, reviewing the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> my pra my practice kind of goes around in circles. Where I'll have the same issue, always, and then yeah, always like does. the issues rotate. <laughs> It's good when you can see that, though, right? Like when you can see that it's like, oh, it's it's kind of the same thing. Like oh, I'm familiar with this one, and and then you see those thoughts, and you see that thought, oh, I prefer depression to being happy, and you and you say it to yourself again, and that's why I'm laughing because I'm just like, there's no way that's right, <laughs> you know? Like even if you think that you're like, oh, I'm okay with being depressed, I I agree with Scott that like, yeah, it's yeah. Well, if you're, if you're when I if, when I gladden the mind, it makes me it makes me like suffer more because I have to like suppress my hindrances and like shut. Well, them then out you're not so, glad. Yeah. Then you're not gladdening your mind. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also I would say, um, yeah, you got this reverse, dude. If you're happily depressed, how are you depressed? Say that you're depressed if you're I, happily depressed. I because right. I'm just like okay with the fact that I'm depressed. I'm like depressed, but like I'm not like resisting being depressed. I'm just kind of like depressed. It, sound, actually, really. it sounds like resignation. Like I would, I would categorize that a bit as resignation, not happiness. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. that's different. Like giving up. Exactly. You're giving up, but it's not the same as letting go. You, you, you kind know? of just say, "I want to take a break. I want to take a break." So you go <laughs> back to your old old habit of just reacting how you like to react being a victim and being sad so you constantly just fall back into that loop because you want to take a break from practice as you said gladdening the mind yeah. feels tiring right yeah Probably because yeah, you're trying awesome. to gladden the mind when it doesn't need to be gladdened it, as far as like you're looking for a for dukkha when there's no dukkha that's what happens to me when i look for dukkha when there's no dukkha you you got you, you're gonna be like oh i'm so tired of this i just want to give up and you feel so sad because there's no dukkha you can't find anything i cannot find anything yeah like that's exactly right if you look for dukkha when there's no dukkha you're just gonna find dukkha yeah you'll find, find what you're looking for yeah right the, the very act of looking is like craving and that mm -hmm. starts it up again that starts it up again. That's right. 
and it all originates from that one thing of like as as Damaro explains the western mindset that this is some kind of goal there's an end finish and you're craving to finish this this task of gladdening the mind or achieving something achieving some kind of state so that's where that kind of arises from i find in myself at least but um, if i don't i still feel like a bit like like a like a dull kind of sadness like a dull depression kind of like a bit well that's the dukkha then um so how do i chuck that out with it without making like more effort to chuck it out relax just re just relax i i would i would what i do in those situations i try to stop the world i will relax and i will look at my 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 body i will look at my <laughs> images i will look at everything and i will literally do everything super slowly it seems to me at least but i'm doing at normal speed i'll be like picking up a cup and then taking a sip really slowly like slow slow yourself so down. like your whole body is just yeah, relaxed yeah, yeah yeah and then you're gonna come back that's to the that's really helpful slowing yourself yeah yeah i can feel kind of how much like more relaxing that is i just reach my bed and pick it up and it's like a, it's a more relaxing like place and stuff Slow so, motion. Also, <laughs> so I, do I just wait for it to go away? Then, like for depression and stuff, I just relax <laughs> and just wait for it to go away. Then? Yeah, I also think I, I have like something related. I, I I had this note today. I mean, I it, it's related to you, I think, Robert, as well, because I've noticed that sadness comes, and you think I'm okay being sad, but it's probably because you're not finding dukkha as much in thoughts, but you can still visualize dukkha. I found out that thoughts can work as far as like visualization. So sometimes you're not finding anything in like language sense, but you might be visualizing without a language. If 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 you have that like kind of, some people are more like visual beings, so they can visualize their thoughts more, and they don't even notice that they're visualizing their thoughts without any language. So you're actually wow. creating dukkha visually for yourself, but you're not noticing the words. Yeah, because I'm not thinking it in words. Yeah, so you're I'm not so finding anything in yeah. words, but maybe there's something in your visual, in your body, in your senses. Uh, it's just more investigation, at least, what works what, what for me. I see. So I, I should, it's like, oh, I'm not having unwholesome thoughts for the verbal. I should still look to see if there's something unwholesome that isn't verbal, like a visualization or like a bodily sensation. Yeah, just sl slow yourself down and 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 try to tr try to re relax. Not try to just relax. <laughs> Trying would be like. You know, <laughs> okay, more. and now, now yeah. I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna try. Uh, yeah, just let just like let my mind go to wherever. Like let my mind kind of find the detail and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. Hope that helps. Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna take that, that with me. Point, yeah. Sometimes I find myself in in that sadness as well. So I, I I've been I've been I've been investigating it more and more and more and more, because I think oh I like being sad as well. Sometimes I'm like no that don't go there. <laughs> that's a dangerous territory. You know that's a rabbit hole. Well, uh, you can enjoy sadness without suffering. Um, for example, when you watch a movie, there may be very sad moments, but. There's no dukkha there. It's actually beautiful in a way. Because because you're not attached to you don't see yourself as a character in the movie. So you can en you can enjoy the full spectrum of human emotions that there is to offer. But there's no there's no there's nobody there to suffer as a result of them. So I could listen to a beautiful touching song and like and feel moved by that emotion of sadness without becoming miserable and a victim of whatever it is I'm experiencing. The problem isn't the dukkha. The problem is the victim of the dukkha is the problem. I see, see. Yeah. So if I if I let the dukkha be there and don't create an identity out of the dukkha, like someone who wants to fix the dukkha, is that OK? Yeah, don't create an identity around fixing the dukkha and don't try to get rid of the dukkha because that's just more dukkha. Okay. 
because that's kind of what I've been doing. I've kind of just been like accepting the deeper and just like not trying to fix it and just like being, that's what I mean. And I'm like, I'm kind of more satisfied just like accepting the deeper and trying to like go through the effort of trying to get rid of it. Perfect. If you, yeah, if you're, in, if you're embracing it, that's okay it, then, that's like, great. That's you can cry, yeah, that's you great. can cry, you can cry and smile at the same mm -hmm. time, you know? Like that's, yeah. that's Cause a it's, wild, it's right? more relaxing to do that. Yeah, it's more yeah. like, it's, it's more that, peaceful. Yeah. It's, and it's, and it's, it's less like it's, more peaceful. it's less like oh poor me and more like uh oh, i can see again these patterns and i can see this sort of like this this thing you know you can step outside of it for a kind of a minute and and really see and just embrace what you're feeling you know and like it's yeah, I just I laugh because it sounds exactly like me so often, you know, like I'm so often in this exact same, you know, sort of thought pattern, you know, yeah. and, um, and, I, and, you know, and then when you're not in it, like I feel I feel touched because I'm like, oh, poor Robert, like, you know, you wish that you could just like just give you a hug and like be like, oh, it's all right, man, That's fine. <laughs> you know, yeah. Cause you don't have you don't have to feel like that you know like I, I i know stuff is like difficult but like the practice doesn't have to be a new difficulty you know that we create for ourselves thanks yeah i was asking scott like because sometimes i get really confused with practice because like at different times i feel like it's appropriate to do what I'm doing now where I just like I'm okay with the fact that I'm suffering and then other times I feel it's more appropriate to like really put forth the effort and get enthusiastic and bring in that beauty and stuff and it just kind of feels like appropriate at different times so it's kind of confusing to know when to do what and I was asking Scott on Instagram um just before the call um like is like sort of is like just is Duke and Eroda just Desire and eroda, is it kind of the same thing? What do you guys think? Wait, what's the question? Oh. Yeah, I didn't get the question, sorry. Oh, so is mm. is Duke and eroda desire and eroda? Does it mean not it doesn't mean you remove desire? So if there's dukkha, yeah. you remove like the desire to remove the dukkha. Okay, du okay, dukkha is suffering. Dukkha and eroda is the cessation of suffering. Yes. Wait, I don't understand where that desire comes into that. Because desire is the source of suffering. <laughs> well, then, that would be dukkha. You can have you can have okay. wholesome desires. Like you can have a realistic picture of like where like where you're at right now, right? Like yeah. Uh, and and you can have some pretty like like wholesome desires and just be like, okay, well, I I can I can accept that. Like for example, a wholesome desire could be something to do with dhamma you know <laughs> like it's 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 okay because we're we're not perfect you know and we, and we never will yeah. be and okay um and to try to make these new rules where it's like i gotta get rid of every desire it's like i don't know i mean get get rid of the easy ones you know the, the like the worldly desires you know that those ones are pretty easy to get rid of but um, some of some of the other ones that it takes it takes quite a while, and I, yeah, I don't know. Just, well, yeah. Did you read like Did you read what I wrote? And because I responded to this question, I said um, he, when he, he was asking about desires, I said uh, it's the desire for truth that is the final desire that quenches all other desires. Right. So exactly. The the desire for truth is a good thing because because the desire for truth comes from truth itself mm. because you wouldn't uh you wouldn't desire for truth if at some level you didn't already know what it was okay right? so, so you, you, you could you couldn't you couldn't desire for happiness if you've never experienced happiness mm -hmm. it's it's a it's almost like a gravitational pull of like a returning home to something that you 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 already know at the deepest core of your being what it is but but the the desire for that is a turning away from all other desires that can be directed towards an object or 
um, it's not the same in the same way. Like you crave something, like you crave something in the world, or uh, you you fear something that is here. Um, it's a desire for something that transcends ultimately any 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 experience you can have. So that desire is a purely wholesome desire. And that's the reason okay. why we're here. Like that desire is the reason why we're here talking about this stuff. Why we seek out the Dhamma. That's why we are in the Sangha. That's why we practice. So that's the only good desire that there is. That's okay. enthusiasm for practice, right? Yeah. yeah. When you say truth, you're, that, that means just like the present moment, right? Like the way that it is. Truth is um, the way that things are. Yeah. Um, so, so it's see, okay like then I'm, to I'm, have I'm hesit I'm hesitant suffering to answer that question because I don't know what you formulate the present moment as. Because even the present moment, if you think of the present moment as like something in between the past and the future, that's still that's still within the linear time. So if you think of the present moment as something that's really small in between all this future and all this past, that's what that's not what I would call truly the present moment. The present moment contains all like time moves within the present moment. Time is like the present moment is the container of all past, future and so on. Yeah. The pres the yeah, present so mo the, the present moment doesn't move through time. Time moves through the present moment. Okay. So I'm not having like mm -hmm. um, it's not like a concept of the present moment. It's like the, the real present moment. The reality of the moment. Yeah. Okay. And that's like that's just this, right? That's uh, just everything. Okay. Uh, Robert, so did you might, did you Did you check out the uh, works of Jed McKenna at any time? Yeah. Yeah, I read his first book. Yeah. Because I I, I was reminded of it because uh, now we 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 were truth into the whole conversation, and I from from what I uh, from it from those that. Um, is that that's exactly what it was about. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think, I think, I think uh, it's quite a nice presentation in there, at least to a part, to a point, uh, what kind of can happen if that becomes your only desire. <laughs> Dag, it was yeah. a little hard to hear you. You're yeah. breaking up a bit. It, all right. You get anything? It's still choppy. Is it yeah. choppy for you guys as well? Can you hear yeah, him choppy. clearly? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's okay. Choppy. Oh, it's yeah. choppy. Yeah. I think he said something to the extent of "see what happens when." Uh, uh, the truth is the only thing you desire. Mm. Right, right. Thank you. Uh, it's going to come find you. I think I remember Jed McKenna saying something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, the truth comes and finds you. <laughs> but that happens as you investigate the moment. The, I mean, it, it's impossible to run from it. As you investigate and you 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 decode. De remove the layers you see what the truth is you might you might as soon as another thought comes you might just go away from it but you're there for at least a split second when you're investigating and you finally get there and then you distract yourself again you get there and you distract yourself again that's what continues to happen can you hear me better now now the uh, microphone is quite noisy to be honest now you're pe like peeking it's oh man like you're peeking <laughs> I think you're, I think you're not choppy though. Go ahead. No, he's choppy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, God damn it. Uh, oh, 
I don't know if I can see this problem right now. Um, you, if you try hanging up and then into rejoining, that's what can be done to my knowledge when it's just in the That works in my last couple of times. I'm just having a lot of problems with the mic. You know, one, one thing that I like thinking about the present moment is this uh, is sort of like math concept of like a, a graph that is coming all the way down to another point and it never reaches that point where we look really, really closely but it's actually kind of like impossible to see that point of contact. Um, so it's like it's something interesting because when we're referring to the present moment, we're actually referring to the contact that happens like an infinitesimally small moment after that, you know. Um, so, yeah. so it's like you'll see the present moment and that was like the present moment. What what's that, Robert? I'm sorry, it's, 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 Doc. It, your thing was just so loud. Your microphone is like super peaking. What, what were you saying, Robert? Um, to see, to see the present moment, you have to run fast the present moment. This is the same thing. Yeah, a little a little bit, but it's like. It's just seeing like seeing how it functions, right? Of like seeing how all these things are are interrelated of like, okay, there's this stimulus that comes into my sense consciousness in some way, and that context sets off the whole line. And these things all kind of arise at exactly the same time over and over and over and over again, you know? Uh, and it never stops happening like that. And we keep observing that. And so I'm just saying it because it can be kind of a thing of like, yeah, latching on to the present moment, like uh, Scott was saying, when we're not actually really touching our idea of the present moment, you know? Um, I don't know if that's helpful, but it can be it maybe is, too it is theoretical. It's, 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 not, it's not theoretical, it's not conceptual, it's experiential. That's the difference, is it experiential? And you can, you can physically feel like, like literally physically feel yourself being carried along as opposed to kind of like thinking of yourself as being in the present moment it's it's a different kind of a of a vibration i mean i don't mean to get hippy dippy with it but it definitely feels like that yeah. i think the easiest way to experience it is just like take take a breath you will feel it for a split second as you consciously choose to take a breath. The, the presence that you bring to that breath, you will feel it. And and, and that's your kind of pinpoint of, of, of the experience. It's pretty much like that, but without actually having to think, oh, I need to take a breath, I need to do this. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not actually the person that has to be like, I mean, I'm thinking the person that has to stretch and get connected with my truth and get to my community because that's a full symbol. It's all about the past because I'm, 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 I'm feeling good in the moment and experience it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really. It's, hey, Robert. Robert, man, you're making me trip. It sounds, it sounds like you're on an alien planet. Because I was going to say, am I the only one? I was like, it sounds like he's like a robot right now. I was looking at Alex's face and it just looks like really confused. I was like, what is going on here? I was thinking the same thing. Is it bad? No. No. Come on. No. Dragged up to the mothership. <laughs> bro, 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 bro. <laughs> Guys, something I'd like to share real quick that I gotta go. Um, is it, Robert, you wanna test your mic? I was gonna share something, but chat, chat, chat. One, two, no. Two. Still alien oh. man. <laughs> oh, I'm not trying to switch my phone and see what's going It's it's probably like the mess of us. We have no idea what you're saying. I was gonna say is is something I was I was talking to Scott like a couple minutes ago um before we jumped on, and what I noticed is that um there's never not seeing 
happening. Seeing is always happening. It's always present, just like the breath. So what is seeing the observations that are being made from this speech that's coming out of this mouth right here is, is always present. It's always seeing it. And it can't be pointed to. You can't point to what is seeing. The minute you try to point to it, what you're po what it is that's pointing is seen. So seeing can only see, uh, and the scene comes from what's seeing. So I don't know why that sounds so freaking cool. No, but no, it's it's experiential. It's not reflective. Yeah, it's not reflective. There's no subject object. It's just it's just object. Yeah, yeah. It's just whatever. It's just not. It's like that non-duality, right? It's non-duality at this point. We're it's going about. by itself. Exactly. Yeah. This. Are you talking about the seeing, Rick? Right. I'm saying the seeing. The seeing. Right. The seeing is going by itself, but the thinking about the seeing that becomes a reflexive act. Yeah. 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 And in which case, then it's but no that's longer. That's seen too. Mm. That's seen too, though. It's all seen. Just really cool to see that because I like it takes the at least in this moment it takes the charge out of unwholesome thoughts like for sure unwholesome thoughts it takes the charge out of even just like noticing thinking like wanting uh having a tendency to think badly about mind wandering it takes the charge out of that too because that's all seen and if there's all that stuff is being seen i don't know it's just it's beyond it it, it doesn't seem like that's I, I see what you're saying like there's no yeah. need to judge it there's no yeah. need, there's no need for judgment anymore because it's still it's still just this like no, yeah no no need for the judgment yeah I'm with you on that mm -hmm. yeah no need for the judgment it's just it's just kind of cool to see it's like oh wow that scene that scene that scene yeah, I don't know that, we, we, but as you're seeing they're saying that seeing that seeing that that's seeing that seeing, seeing. seeing. Yeah, it's seeing, it's seeing, it's seeing, it's seeing, it's seeing, it's seeing, it's seeing. It doesn't. It uh. It has no end. Hmm. It has no end. But then I guess that means it also has no <laughs> beginning. <laughs> so, I suppose, it's like. Either you're seeing the seeing that's going on, or you're not. But the seeing is always going on. Just like the breath. Yeah. So the, the point of like this is, is to be in the seeing as much as you can because yeah. that's what like, you're, you're experiencing. Yeah. Like, fully. And it's, it's really kind of cool because it's like, even if there's like really great joy or spaciousness, right? Like those byproducts that we get, that's all just seen too. <laughs> so. I don't know. I'm gonna take my candy and uh, give give myself a gold star. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> and all that was just seen. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. And we're seeing <laughs> you seeing. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Love you. Got to get back to work. But yeah. um. Yeah, see you soon. Man. Have a good one. Bye. For the insight. It's been yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, guys, is my mic better? Better. It is. Mm. It is better. Yeah. Yay. Success. Mm. Awesome. Um, just if you guys would be open to talking about what we talked about before. Um. So the truth is the experience of the present moment. It's not a thought about the present moment. It's not the thought for the present moment. It's the is the experience of it, and you don't think about experience, you feel experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. Yes, okay. So that's right. And be, yeah, and because we're in such a habit of thinking and reflecting, even more, even in instantly after something happens, that we confuse it so quickly, right? And we start putting categories and expectations and judgments and 
cravings and whatever right in front of it, but it pulls us right out of that present moment truth experience. Yeah. So is it awesome? So if my experience is suffering and that's that's truth, is it is it really whole is it really unwholesome? Is it really wholesome to want to change my experience to be one without suffering? Wouldn't it be more wholesome to accept the suffering that's oh, there? Like from what I get of your question, I, I I'm just reminded of I think you might have even mentioned this one or some somebody did, the whole uh, so you have a choice when you find yourself physically in a situation that is unpleasant. You can either change something if you can change it, or if you can't change it, then you still then you just don't have to worry about it, right? Because you can't you can't change anything, right? So if you find yourself in that circumstance and you can see there's something that I can change, then just change that, you know. And and usually when it comes to thoughts and the mind there usually is something that we can change, right? And the thing that we're changing is we're we're changing the way that our minds physically function. We're rewiring our our brains and we're rewiring like our our heart really, you know, it's the the mind heart sort of thing that that we're like working on getting more in touch with and getting a little bit away from the the other one that you're that you're kind of going with. You know, um, I don't know if that's helpful. Can I add something to that? So I think, I think uh, when 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 you say you don't want to change the the suffering, you 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 feel like ac- accepting it. It comes from the position of sufferer, because the sufferer feels like it's gonna lose. It it still comes from a point like you want to be able to feel sadness. You want to be able to feel all emotions. And if you tell yourself it's not okay to feel these emotions then that part of you has to die off that part has to of you you have to let go you have to lose the sadness it's it's almost it comes a death of an, a certain ego certain certain spot of the victim certain spot of the ego so that's why it's so hard to let go of that part because it's fear the fear of it losing it itself is going to manifest as in saying oh wait as this thought oh wait am i doing it too hard am i am i am i supposed to am i supposed to get rid of this dukkha right now because i just want to feel sad so it's going to contradict itself. Right. And I think you said something really good. You used the words like let go. But if someone's identifying with that desire, then they see it as giving it up rather than letting it go. And it's hard to give something up. It's like trying to quit something that's habitual yeah. rather than realizing that you don't need it anymore and you can let it go without a concern, without a, yeah. without a worry. But that's a, that has to do with a reframe, you know, that's a, a big habitual reframe to realize, you know, that, you know, in the end, it's not, I would say it's, it isn't worth, it isn't worth it. It sounds like a judgment, but it's not worth it to, 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 to be in that perspective. I mean, you can't just change it. You have to work through it a bit. But yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, like there's, there's between me it feels letting like go and up. giving up. Yeah, you're like, oh, I, I don't want to give this up. To change it. Yeah, you're yeah, clinging yeah. to something. You're clinging to this identity, as you said, Carl, sufferer. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. We do have to put a li- like a little bit of effort in and like yeah. getting the energy, getting the energy built up and the faith really that, hey, this really works like this. You know, and, and we're going to have times when we seem to be making progress and then we seem to be back in sort of the same feelings. And we're like, wait a minute, I, I, I haven't really gotten anywhere because I'm having the same sort of thought patterns. And we when yeah. we're in those moments, yeah. then we really have to like that's that's when we really got to practice like almost, you know, it's more important because it's like when things are going easy, it's, it's just effortless. Right. But like when you find yourself with these sorts of thoughts, these sorts of just kind of ambivalence to the world, um, that's a really important time, I think, to pra- to really <clears throat> practice and to really focus in and be like, I, I got to get this energy up and nobody's going to come and do it for me. You know, like it's it's on me. I, I have this often where I'm sitting there and I'm like, poor me, like, who should I call? Who should I talk to? And then the realization hits me. 
wait a minute, how many times have you heard the whole teachings of the Buddha is there's nobody coming to save you. This is on you, you know? Have you learned how to comfort yourself? Have you learned how to be caring and kind to yourself? And to say these kind things to yourself, you know, and it's not running but it away. It doesn't it's feel not... kind to do that. It doesn't feel kind to force myself to feel good. Yeah, you don't force. When it's unnatural. You don't. You don't. You don't force. You know. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I think Scott put it in the chat. He says like he said the same thing to Alex. You relax into it, because what you're experiencing, you're trying to change your your experience. You're feeling sadness, and you're trying just to layer it more. You're saying, oh, is this dukkha? I have to get rid of it. So you're 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 already irritated. So what what you need to do when you're irritated by that? You might not feel irritated, but you feel sadness, and it's manifesting. You need to just relax. Relaxing into it, it will solve itself out. You're you're picturing you're picturing a future that is different than your reality of what you're in right now. That's the that's the other thing that for for me what ends up happening is that I'm like, okay, I'm sad right now, and I and I know if I do this practice, I should get happy, but. I'm not actually happy right now, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of, yeah. I'm kind of leaning. Yeah, something like I'm in the expecting. Future. Yeah, and I'm yeah, expecting like the I'm, result, I'm waiting right? for I'm it like, as well. Oh, I know, I know how this goes. So if I just take a few deep breaths, I know exactly how I'm gonna feel. But you're not actually mm. feeling how you actually feel in that moment, right? So it's like you're kind of telling yourself something that's taking you out of the present and not getting you in touch with those feelings. And hey. I write and back my old friend sadness. You and know? then when it doesn't work, life. you're there's a part of you is like, see, see, it right. didn't work. I knew it wouldn't work this time. Yeah. I knew there was something wrong different this time. Yeah. But you've already yeah. it's back to self-fulfilling again. It's back to the self-fulfilling. Let's not forget doubt is one of the hindrances. Mm -hmm. Right? Doubt. That's one of the big ones. Well, they're all big, but that's a big one. That's one of my biggest ones. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, but you, yeah, you can't, you know, as you said, you can't force it. You can't, I mean, it's difficult. You can do it. You can do it. It's difficult to meditate angry. It's difficult to meditate frustrated. <laughs> I think what uh, might be really helpful, too, is to recognize just the success for, like, a moment. Like, even when it comes to, like, say, spotting doubt. So you might be able to spot doubt for a moment and be like, yes, this is successful. I've seen you doubt. And then doubt will come back up, right? But then it's just spotting it again and then playing off that, you know, success with that. I agree, and, David. Yeah, sometimes just naming the hindrance mm -hmm. reduces its hold. Just naming yeah. it reduces the hold a little bit. It doesn't, doesn't work all the way, but it definitely helps, helps condense it into uh, identifying that. And then mm -hmm. you can work with it rather than just like like you said carl layering a bunch of extra expectations on it like why oh, shouldn't you feel this way i've been meditating for years yeah i shouldn't be feeling yeah. this way like i'm, I'm happened... trying so hard to do the technique it should be working yeah 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 but then but then that's back to expectations again so yeah it's good to it's good to note the hindrances as they as they arise and then i think it's easier to tangle with the with the something you can you can understand that it is it's like oh it's this big massive i don't know what i just don't want to practice that you know i think it's the, the trap no it, you you felt i i would i would i would like use this kind of metaphor you fall into a trap but you're not recognizing that you're stuck but when, but when you recognize a hindrance you're saying hey 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 wait wait this is doubt i'm just stuck in a trap mm. you actually automatically you know what to do i need to lift this up i need to do this i need to do this to get out of it so naming it to recognizing yeah, what, what is that i'm experiencing right now allows you to to move past it at mm. least one step another step another step it, it brings you back as is as we said to the the moment right. at least for a yeah. second yeah, well, that's right. It's just sometimes for a moment because it'll go like back and forth, right? Like, so it'll be like, aha, I see you, you know, doubt. And then, okay, cool. And then we can get into perhaps, you know, feeling that success. But then the thoughts will come sneaking back in. But, oh, I see you doubt again or whatever has arisen, right? So that's the thing. It's just going to, it'll come back. But it's just when it does getting those little nuggets of success and that's enough success to just ride with it and build that confidence 
in um, the practice of it. But I do think, too, it is a good point um, that you don't necessarily have to have, like, the in woohoo, like, most ecstatic, energetic thing all the time, right? Sometimes moving in, because the bodily sensations, right, perhaps if you are feeling a little bit more sad, you can perhaps move it to mellow and the relaxation and the calm and the sukha and it's okay, right? And that's the thing, right? Even when you're, you're thinking about like being satisfied with, with this sadness, it's like the one thing is probably happening at a time. You're sad, you're in dukkha for a bit, and then, oh, there's the satisfaction. Oh, I can just, you know, I can just chill with this. And then the sadness and the dukkha comes back and it'll play back and forth, right? So that could be something I, else. I, to, think, I think I know what we mean. Sometimes I'll reach like a, a lower level of, so a higher level of satisfaction. The sadness will still be there, but it'll be like a shadow of what it once was. It'll be like a shadow of sadness. Like it'll be the sadness, but in like a more, uh, a less intense form. Hmm. Or it's like, yeah, like the sadness will perhaps go away, but then it'll come resurface back up, and then it'll go away, and then it'll come and surface back up. But yeah, it'll kind of pull perhaps more to the background. Yeah. But and then I, it is, yeah. And I do but, think that over time, you know, this skillful observation, you know, helps remove yourself you know, back into the present, back into observation, back into science, all these things, but to layer expectation on it, to mm. say, you know, by a certain amount of time, this should have occurred. You know, the, the, the skillful means you end up automatically getting better as you go without concerning yourself with trying, I mean, yeah, I mean, the motivation to improve is, of course, important, but the idea of you know, acting like there's these checkpoints. It's like, okay, by this amount of time, I should have, or I've reached this height before. Why can't I just jump right back? But the, the skillful means will take care of themselves and it will get easier in any way. Just, just, just as a natural way of, of, of practice, you know, that's why it's practice. <laughs> Practicing towards it, you know? So. I was going to say that. I find Thanks, guys. That's, that's, that's Really helpful. There's a lot of information to share there. Brilliant. Go on, Joe. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's okay. Uh, I was going to say that I, I find that my thoughts get really, really tricky after a while, after a lot of practice. And it's like, no matter how much I practice, I tend to think that there's going to be a time when I can always have this sort of separation and see, oh, this is just a thought. And let go of it as that but the tricky thing is is that the thoughts tend to change and a lot of them have to do with these sort of ideals or like i mean like many of you i spend a lot of time watching dhamma talks and people tend to be at their best when they're talking or you know and and i don't really have a, a realistic picture all the time of the full compass of human experience you know and this can be why it's I think it's sometimes a little bit difficult with the internet as a sangha medium, especially because you don't physically see all of us when we're struggling with something. And so you don't see how the person deals with that, what what skills. And uh, and so we're describing to you what we do and what we found effective. Um, but, you know, you, you're kind of maybe because I know I'm just saying this because I do it. I'm projecting that all of you are just super 100 percent happy all the time. You know, and well, well, uh, I, am. I mean, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rick. Is. We've been practicing a really long time too, Rick. So I'm not surprised. <laughs> clearly, no. Clearly, no. I'm still existing, which means I'm still suffering. I'm still in some sort of suffering. Um, yeah, it's it it is. It's, yeah, that's interesting what you say. I I don't I don't listen to that many. Dhamma talks actually. I, I I take a lot of that time and I practice what the time sometimes when I feel the urge to listen to a Dhamma talk, I end up using that time for practice instead. Because but that's my personal choice to 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 try and move along the path on my in my own way. Of course Dhamma talks are are helpful. They have their time and you know time and place, but I 
I found that I, I benefit more through the through the actual sitting practice, even if it means, you know, one or two hours every day. You know, that's that's a luxury I happen to have and I'm grateful for that. But you know, that's the I kind of like lean into that into that direction. Practice more than a lot of uh, gather like like information gathering. You know. <clears throat> Can I ask you guys a question? Uh, when you guys mean practice, for me, I, I feel like when we say practice, we always imagine this kind of sitting period, or I'm gonna put so much effort right now, and I'm gonna just observe myself. But I can't. I find myself. I cannot not practice. It's impossible <laughs> not to practice. Like right. it personally, I, it, it's impossible not to practice. So I, it's not like something I have to do, like to sit down and meditate. Even if I go 10 days, 20 days without actually looking at myself, it's impossible not to practice in some sort of way. You know? That's great. I mean, but I think Rick is just saying, he just didn't say it, but he's saying formal practice. Yeah, and the benefit, formal practice. Yeah, right. The benefit of formal. formal practice is that we see our minds quiet down. You know, and that we we take that period and slow down really too. Back slow to down. the slow mode. Yeah. Back to the slow mode rather than rather than rather than real time. Yeah. I I, would, I like that. I That's a really think, good point to me. I think that really that good. formal meditation is is much more. It's been it's been more effective. I mean, it's when you're sitting there, you know, like. Yeah, I think I think for me sometimes uh, I find that Dhamma talks and sort of guided meditations and things like this can be helpful for me when I find myself really stuck in the hindrances and really lost. That that's where I'm mm -hmm. at because I spent a lot of time in the past, sort of uh, like like I, I just I wanted to sit in silence. I had kind of this idealistic viewpoint of like, you know, from doing vipassana retreats and things like that, and so. I now I'm a little bit more humble about it for myself, and and also it's just been it's been the winter time, and I'm a farmer, so like you know I have a ton I have a ton of time right now, and talk to me in about a month, and I'll be like probably not watching so many Dhamma talks. <laughs> Yeah. that's how that's my that's my schedule you know it's it's just you know I have I have a busy time of the year, and I have a really relaxed time of the year, you know. I would like to say something to. That Carl mentioned about the practice throughout the day when you're not just formally sitting. So the last, I don't know, last couple days or last week, I've really noticed um, how easy it is for my mind to try and jump to like the most enjoyable parts of the day or the parts of the day where I'm not like formally working and trying to like run like get it get excited or anticipatory about those moments but the last week it's been a bit different and i've been able to kind of notice that anticipation and say you know what's wrong with enjoying what you're doing right now why are you running to this sort of great like free time moment of, oh, I can't wait till I meditate, or I can't wait till I'm done with the work, or I can't wait till I this or that. And wow, I'm just like, I do it a lot. I do it a lot. I'm running to a next time without really. Um, and then it's been a bit of, um, it's been about practicing that observation of, oh, look at you anticipating. What's wrong with this moment? What's wrong? Aren't you? don't you have the potential to enjoy this right what you're doing and of course you know don't you get a charge sometimes when you're teaching don't you get a charge sometimes when you're you know whatever you know and so that's been really uh and again i think that it's the formal practice that's allowed the platform for that kind of observation to take place and of course it's still going on i'm still thinking about a little bit about okay now, when this happens, and oh, okay, it'll be feel better because I won't have these obligations, etc. But it's less because now there's less anticipation. It doesn't feel like oh, I can't, you know, like the little mental thought. I can't wait until, even though it's same same day, you know. I I stopped doing that with the weekends a long time ago. I think most people go oh, I can't wait till Friday. That's a very common thought people have, right? Is most of the working world. I don't have that one anymore. But in, like, these moments of the day, I'm like, oh, I can't wait until, 
And I'm like, whoa, 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 you can't wait? Really? You can't? Yes, you can enjoy now. Do you have to wait? <laughs> Do you have to wait at all? Like that. So that's, I don't know, it's an observation I wanted to share with everybody that was kind of a, a nice little breakthrough uh, I felt this week. That's awesome. That's yeah, great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really healthy. Awesome. Sometimes I have related to that. Uh, I, I get the the shoulds a little bit where I'm doing something that I, I find a little bit unpleasant and I'm like, I should enjoy this. Like I'm a practitioner. Oh I, sh I should I should be able to, to enjoy myself right now instead of actually enjoying myself. And then when I catch, when I yeah. catch myself, yeah. I'm like, OK, I, I, I can enjoy this, too. You know, my usual one is, is doing the laundry, uh, you know, where I'm yeah. like, what is so unpleasant about like the clothes being a little bit cold and wet? Like this is so crazy. <laughs> and that's when I put on the music and I'm like, I can do something pleasant, have some pleasant stimulus while I'm doing something that I would normally categorize as unpleasant. I do that a lot when I'm cleaning, for example. I put on some lo-fi or some like nice, you know, instrumental from like uh, Final Fantasy or something. And yeah, I don't mind dusting. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, I get to. I have an excuse to listen to music and I have, you know, an excuse to, to enjoy dusting <laughs> or whatever crap I don't like to do normally. <laughs> Robert, your, your microphone, your microphone back on the sounds planet. like an alien again. You're back, on the, you're back in the mothership, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I noticed, I noticed that as well as you said uh, anticipating the next part of the day especially mm -hmm. like recently i've been having this moment of uh, i don't know why damarado's way wakey wakey every time i'm, I'm anticipating something this is his voice in my head wakey wakey look what you're doing <laughs> I'm cycling from work home today and I'm already planning, oh, I'm going to cook this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. I'm like, wakey, wakey, look where you're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be like clear and present possible danger. It's just, I told you, I think I mentioned in an earlier chat, I can feel sometimes my heart speeding up when I start anticipating the future too much. It's like a physical response to, oh, I can't wait. That's stopped a little bit, thankfully. That's like a dog wiggling his tail. Really yeah, that kind of like, oh, but now now I'm just noticing the thought before it gets to be a physical sensation. So more or less, not always, but more or less. Yeah. yeah. What, I, what I'm noticing too for myself recently is that I, I have a lot of standards related to like how much like work I get done and what I classify as like, as work and so like if i've been a good boy and i do my eight hours or whatever in the day then all of a sudden i'm like oh good job now you can really be satisfied but even there sometimes i catch it in my mind where it's like but you you didn't work totally hard enough you know like you you didn't do it and uh and then sometimes i just like i won't classify something as work where i'm like okay well i, I have to do this but it doesn't count because like I'm, I'm not actually making money doing this and like th that can't count as work even though I'm, I'm only one person and I, like and it's setting like unrealistic expectations and this is kind of natural I think when you're working for yourself mm, sure. and there's more things than you can ever get done that you're just like that it's some sort of weird reaction where you're like never satisfied with the amount of work that you do and you get really disappointed with yourself if you're like having a day where you just like failed or whatever where you know where you're just like today i just i can't do it I, I don't have the i don't have the energy and it's raining like shit outside and what i had planned i'm, I'm just not going to do today and it's a total failure it's a write-off today's a write-off i noticed these thoughts it's a self and it's fantastic like you're you recognize it these are your own categories you're like failing yeah. to live up to your own like you could have sorted any way you want you have complete freedom over how you categorize your life yep but yeah you're like okay i'm gonna hold these standards and i never quite reach them yep. <laughs> and if i if i told you guys my standards you'd be like oh my god you're crazy you know like if you came and like saw what i was doing you'd be like i mean that's like nobody does this, Joe. Just take it easy on yourself, you know. And so then I like when I see that, 
I'm like, oh, if they think I can take it easy on myself, why are you not taking it easy on yourself? You know, you're like. Uh, right. But then that's you. But that's you like also, a validation from others. Yeah. Like there's a validation thing that's going on. It's like, oh, I need someone else to tell me it's OK. I right. can't tell myself it's OK. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Guys, I have to go. It's nice to chat with everybody, and uh, it's really you, helpful. Thanks I wish you a that. peaceful week, and I'll great. talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs> I yeah, think this, you're a badass, Joe. I respect. This I respect but this validation thing, ethic. this validation thing is it's crazy. It's crazy, and like I, I know a lot of it is like schooling and like you know just. Yeah, I, I was listening to a talk with Ajahn Brahm and he was like, aim for like 70 percent, you know, and he's like that. That's like a good percent, because if you have 30 percent wrong, that's something to learn from. You know, like if, if you're not making mistakes like that, how are you ever going to learn? Like he's like, I give you permission to make mistakes. And, and I think that I have to just keep repeating that to myself, that it's OK to make mistakes. It's OK to try things out in life fail and try again you know because sometimes i get this thing where i'm like i failed so bad and i fucked up my life so badly that that this is it you know and i went from being just on the right road to now i'm not and all these thoughts and comparisons and comparisons to other farmers and other people's lives and things like that you know that are just not realistic and like, hey, you're doing the best that you can, you know, like we all are, you know, and OK, if you didn't get anything done today, who cares? You know, like I don't have a boss on my ass. I'm the only person on my ass. <laughs> Even if you Sometimes didn't I could have the boss, it would be OK. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes I find it easier to blow off a boss, though, because it's like somebody else. And then you're like, oh, whatever. That guy's an idiot. But yeah. like you but you believe yourself. <laughs> hmm. And these unrealistic standards of like, I, I gotta I gotta meditate at this time, I gotta wake up at this time, I gotta do this for this many hours, and like, and yeah, it's uh, they really like kill you, man. They take they take such a toll on me for sure. Like I always find like I'll get I'll be motivated for like a day, and I'll just be burnt out the next day, just burnt to a crisp, like completely, just like you know sometimes my entire like worldview changes where it will be one day like this is the solution and then the other day it'll be like the exact opposite of just lazing around that's the solution because i'm just so burnt out and like running myself into the ground yeah for sure you can build a habit of burning yourself out like you, you, you can, can go hard for like, 20 days and then for one month you're in a, in a hole yeah for me it'll be like hard for like a couple of hours and then in a hole for the rest of the week. <laughs> but, yeah. I think like that one day, like you go really hard, you put yourself into that rabbit hole because you say, I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you do do, and you create such a high expectation for yourself that if you're not able to meet the next day, you're going to fall so hard. In the next yeah. day, you're going to say, yeah. oh, yesterday I did this, this, did this, and then you fall so hard just because you build yourself throughout the day so much. But if you do one thing, one thing right at the day and then the next day comes and you don't do it, you're like, ah, ah it's still OK. It's just one thing I didn't do. It's not like 10 things like yesterday. You know? So the more we build yeah. ourselves, the more we set ourselves for a trap, like the, 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 the bigger the fall is going to be, the deeper the rabbit hole, as they say. What I, what I find is that I end up getting more done when I just am relaxed and I just naturally follow whatever rhythm is coming up. And I, and I know that I have these things that I like need to be doing, but if I let them occur at their own pace, then they occur. But I spend so much time thinking about when they will occur and planning and trying to be efficient that then I, I do burn myself out and I, and I end up getting less done. And I can see that I've done this for a lot of years. So it's a really hard retraining process of because I basically like most of my adult life, I've worked for myself. So I've been my own internal boss and I've been a rough boss on myself, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's a retraining process and really reminding myself, wait a minute, look at how much stuff you got done when you just naturally walked when you had to walk and lifted this thing when you had to lift it and went and did this and went and did that and 
Look at that. Amazing. These things just seem to get done on their own because you enjoyed the whole process and you didn't get to the end of it. Like, oh my God, that was horrible. You know, um, thank God I'm done with that. But you just it could, it could enjoy each aspect of that task as, you know, as it was. And this is a constant thing. I, I That's why I really appreciate that I have the time to like, to, to do this, to work for myself, but it's, but sometimes it's like, like when I have been working for somebody else and I just have a mindless thing to do, I'm like, wow, this is so, this is so easy. Cause like, I, I just, I just got to get this thing done. And like, there's no standards because I know that they've set a standard that is doable. Um, and it's hard when you're working for yourself because you're like knowing the financial pressures of it and like, holy crap. I mean, I have to set unrealistic standards because this just ain't going to work out financially if I don't work for so many hours, but to accept, okay, well, this just isn't going to work out, you know, like, I'm just going to lose money. And that's a hard one to accept, but it's something that you kind of have to do if you want to maintain your sanity. See the bigger picture and like, okay, well, it's not always going to be like that. You know, it's going to change. <laughs> Eventually you'll have other things in place and you'll get more efficient and, you know, you work with other people eventually and yeah. So these are some things that I'm seeing with, with myself. Nice. Um, I thought of another way to phrase my question from the beginning. Um, would that be cool? If I try and ask it. Okay, so basically, If if it causes me to suffer more to try and remove the hindrances, should I do it or just like surrender to the hindrances? Do or do not. There and is neither no is really ideal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was quoting oh, Yoda. Not this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's the thing, right? I think it's like, I mean, it's spotting them. And then I think it is like really just that chain reaction of spotting it and that congratulations. And like, like there is that little bit of effort and then sustaining, but like, Ah, uh, I gotta try real, real hard to like pull out this, you know, hindrance or whatever. There's still that f, you know what I mean? That essence of um, almost yeah. thirst, right? Like of of getting, you know, rid of it. But in that moment that you've spotted it, even if it is just for a minute, it or a moment, sorry, it's gone for that moment, right? It's like that's sort of the the speed you know, at I, which things I, function, right? You saying that actually really answered my question because it kind of gave me this insight that like, don't focus on the results. Don't focus on the removal of the hindrance. Focus on the process. Enjoy the process mm -hmm. of, notice, oh, you noticed, hey, congrats. Yeah. Not expecting, like Joe was saying, like it was actually kind of hit me and something when he said that, like not expecting that's going to remove the hindrance and being bummed out that it didn't. But focusing on just the process, just the process, just the process, and not even caring about the hindrance, like just the process of yeah. Of that's what a lot of myself. practice. A lot of practice is just focusing board. on on the whole process of it, and just mm -hmm. reminding ourselves that other people have done this, and or or I have done this and seen results. Let's not try and fear like theoretically come up with why I'm doing less. I'm I'm just gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this, you know, and. I'm going to see what what happens if I keep this up and I'm in it for the long haul, right? Because this is this is all short term sort of things, but like these successes eventually you get to the point where you're like, wow, I mean, my whole identity and personality has changed, you know, just on on the relative level, you know, where like I am a kinder person and it kind of snuck up on me and and it wasn't like the times that I theoretically thought about it that really helped. And but it's it's like when I was like, you know what, I'm just going to just do this because I'm going to trust that this works, you know, just I'm going to put my my heart into this, you know, and get in touch with with this 
these feelings that I'm having, you know, because other wiser people than me have told me that this is what helps, you know? Um, and when I've been able to like give into that trust, like, yeah, it's, it's like, Hey, just, just do it, you know? Cause it's right. like, it's fun. It's enjoyable. You know, if it's not enjoyable, then like, don't do it, you know? Um, but like sort of resigning, it's sort of like, like when I get like that, it's like, I think the world's going to stop where I'm just like, okay, well, this is it. Like the world's just ending right now. And and this is just like the state that I'm, that I'm going to be in and the state of things. And, and it's kind of like, I'm expecting the movie to end, but everything keeps going and it's not static. And this is why, like, when you go to like monasteries and stuff, they're often active and they're often like doing projects and changing up the schedule and like just doing weird stuff because they don't want us to like be stuck on this like attachment to tranquility, this attachment mm. to just like this sort of static sort of thing, you know, that the idea of practice, but it's flowing, it's changing, mm. it's shifting, it's fluxing that's reality. It's constantly moving. You know, we can't see it until we still our minds. And so it's a weird sort of dichotomy of like, the more we still our minds, the more we see everything is changing. Everything is fluxing. Everything is just going, you know, and we're not really totally in control of it. It's kind of going on its own. That's why I think like when I, when they said it all ties up, what just Joe said, it's all comes down to pressure. That's when I said relax, because it's constantly moving. So in one scenario, as we always say, you might need to actively seek out and remove dukkha. But in some scenarios, you might actually not need to do it. You might just need to relax. So it, it's, it's really constantly shifting. So there will, you're looking for one-way answer right now as you're asking that question. You're always looking, okay, if I got this one tip, I'm going to do it uh, tomorrow when it shows up or next time it shows up. But in reality, it's a new moment. It's already shifted. So you're going to have to investigate and look what, what, what really is it? Is it doubt? Is it, is it frustration? Is it something new? It's never the same thing. It's never going to be the same mm -hmm. sadness. It's always fresh. Relax and relaxing is moving, removing the hindrance. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that yeah. is yeah. a direct path of removing the hindrance. Both yeah. ways you're removing, removing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, like, if you just go into relaxing into it, right, or just, yeah, the relaxing, that's the new sort of um, moment, right? So it's not like, you know, <laughs> I think that's the thing is, like, oh, these hindrances are all going on in the background. I got to hit every single one of them before I can finally relax. And it's like, no, that moment, if you are with your breath and you are relaxing, there isn't these hindrances present. It's the when the thought arises of, oh, no, I need to catch a hindrance right now. This isn't right. That's when the hindrances arise, you know, come up, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, should we aim for the first jhana before we know hindrances? Or is it enough to just be, like, satisfied with having some hindrances? Just, like, for being overall happy. Well... I think it's like, I mean, when you're you're satisfied there, there isn't like the hindrances, right? Like, at least I think in the terms we're talking about satisfaction, right? If if there is like, okay, if you are unsatisfied, right? It's because you are, you know, craving something. You can't be like right. thirsty and quenched at the same time, right? Like. So, like, that's the thing. You might fluctuate. So I think this is the idea, too, of, like, viewing a jhana in a very, like, permanent thing. Like, oh, man, I'm going to go into jhana for 20 minutes. Rather than, okay, it'll kind of stay a little bit more stable, but, oh, pop. You know what I mean? As the, um, like, a hindrance, okay, comes up, spot it, right? But if the, I mean, I think the general attitude will be much more to be like, okay, we can come back to this very easily, very much with a sense of ease. And when something comes up, it's very, you know, it's it's easy to spot it or take care of it or just relax back into it because it doesn't, okay, whatever, you know. <laughs> a little stray thought came up, okay, and just float away, you know. <laughs> One metaphor comes to my head. 
is like pulling rope, like pulling rope contest. You're constantly pulling rope with, with yourself. Sometimes you have to let go of the rope so the opponent falls into you. Sometimes you have to pull the rope. You know, that's yeah. that's yeah. how yeah. this yeah. process. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. Gonna say it can be confusing to know like when to do each, I guess. I, I would say it's something to aim for. If there is anything to to aim for, is being okay with reality as it is mm -hmm. right now, you know, and and to see, wow, I'm in the present moment, and this is really wonderful, exactly right where I'm at. That's that's something yeah. to aim to aim for, and to constantly be going for all the time. Uh, who cares about you know the the John the like Johnos, <laughs> you know, like just just be okay. Yeah. And so that, that's yes. Yeah, so, so that's 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 yeah. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm like just being okay. Like even though I'm not in a perfect jhana, and I don't really want to do the effort of creating enough PT and just energy. Can and we see? Can we see? Can we change our to minds to see if there's there's that. actually nothing wrong in the present moment? Can we can we rewire our brains to to see that? that this whole thought that there was ever something wrong right now is created inside of myself, you know? Mm. And like, that's, that's like the, the practice that we're cultivating is to see right now, there's nothing wrong. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. If there is something to do, I'm going to do it joyfully, you know, <laughs> but most of the time there's nothing to do. There's no danger here, nothing wrong, you know? And we keep doing this over and over and over again. And when we find ourselves uh, caught, we just come back to this. And it's just a, a good reminder, you know. Um, and that's why I find it can be less than helpful sometimes with the super technical, uh, mm. hardcore Dharma stuff. Because sometimes I wonder, I know I've mentioned this before, but it's worth repeating, I think. How are these guys in everyday life? How is their relationships with their parents? How is their relationships with their friends? How are they interacting with others? Do they have like kindness, you know? I don't really know because like all I get from their descriptions and the way that they talk is like a bunch of technical things going on, you know? And they're really good at breaking down reality into little fragments and you know, you see a lot of <laughs> a lot of things about, you know, different descriptions of what's going on, but it's like are, are they are they able to actually it's it's almost like they're practicing in a different in a different like way and their and their goals are on like a different wavelength than where I've come to with my goals right and that is okay so my mind is gonna like keep being unsatisfied with reality and I'm going to have to change that to remind myself no 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 everything's okay Joe like there's no mm -hmm. problem here it's all made up for yourself you know and yeah and it's a challenge it's a challenge you know like it's it's i wish it's sadness was on the hindrances list so there was like a way to deal with it because there's no sadness hindrance i wish there was i just kind of noticed robert when joe said can we just appreciate this moment right now you kind of like relaxed and you had a little smile and then you went back into like this thinking about like, it really hard saying, yeah. and then you come up with another question like oh i wish there was a sadness you <laughs> relax for a second and then you 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 moved on so that's what we're saying by like, relaxing that's is, good is, nice you're saying, able thank you you're able to do it whenever you want to when we mention it to take a breath you you take a breath and you relax that's that's yeah i, I, I feel, feel it for a second i guess a, a couple seconds it's like, oh, nice. and then, Wait, you wait. See, build on that success. <laughs> you build yeah. on that success, and you just do it over and over and over again, and it never, it never stops, you know. Mm -hmm. And like, you, there's never a time to not have this, you know. Like, yeah. to just keep doing it over and over again, and build on the success. And oh yeah, I can really do this, you know. Like, I got this. This isn't so hard. Yeah, that's that's one big key point. Is is have trust in yourself that you can do this. Like. Mm. There is no no authority out there that can help you deal with this, as, as we talked before. You are responsible for, for it. Even if you talk to the Murat or even if you talk to us, you already know how to do it. You already done it many, many times. You're an expert in this. You, will, you, you know how to do it. Yeah. And having that trust will bring you back to the success. 
yeah, I think, yeah. That's the doubt. You're, you're mm. experiencing the doubt as we, 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 it all boils down to the first thing, as, as I mentioned, it's the doubt. That's it. You don't trust it. You can deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think like being satisfied and content with the knowledge and the skill that you have is very, very helpful. <laughs> like into to being able to yeah just see it again and it's like okay because like that's yeah i've said that to you a couple times and it's always really helpful because i think you said that i've been like man it's great to you i'm not appreciating what i'm not i'm not actually not still in my skin but what i believe you're sounding like a little bit again copy again it's all right okay it's okay just do it all again. <laughs> it's, a really, it's a really good like yeah. mindfulness. But it's like it's kind of funny seeing his reaction every time. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, oh no, <laughs> it's a good mindfulness bell each time. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I think sad sadness isn't listed as a hindrance because it's uh, it's not it's not a hindrance. You know, it's mm. it's just an emotion, and it's like it's okay to be sad, like because you can be. You can have all these emotions and feel sadness at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, like you can kind of be realistic about the world. It is difficult. Like, I mean, when I look at people who are a little bit younger than me, I'm like, man, it the, the age that you're at is fucking difficult, you know, and like I, I just you just have to have trust where I'm like, hey, like give it a few years and it gets like a lot easier, you know. And um, and when I talk to older people that practice, they kind of say the same thing to me when I'm struggling with stuff. And they're like, oh, wait till you get to 60. You know, and they're, I've heard people say this to me where they're like, what, I consider myself like a complete idiot all in my 30s and 40s. Like it wasn't until 60 that I really figured out what was going on, you know. And so it's like, wow, that's wonderful that like life is getting better. Because yeah, getting but life better is getting better still. That's awesome, you know, man. That's such a, a wholesome way of reframing it. it. What a mm -hmm. different way of going through yeah. life thinking it's going to get easier because I'm going to get better at this, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep practicing and like things are just going to keep flowing with each other and get better. And when you hear other things from society, you just say, like, okay, whatever. You're, you're living in a different world and hold on to your views really strongly. And I, I'll, I'll have some other more wholesome views, you know, that. Things are easy right now, but if I practice more, these skills will develop, you mm -hmm. know, because I've seen them develop and wow, it's going to be really easy, you know, because it's really easy right now. A lot easier than when I was 16. I mean, we all can say that, right? True, true, very true. It's just one success after another. It just, mm -hmm. just build. You know, yeah. and I really, I really resonate with something Carl said as well. Like, um, like the holding on to the victim identity. I do that a lot. When I feel like I've been the sufferer for a long time, mm -hmm. when I start to taste the gladness, I'm like, fuck it, it's bullshit, it's fake, it's bleeding. I don't even want it. I'm just gonna stay being a victim. You know? Yeah, yeah. But so. it's actually, I, I can't actually just. It is objectively <laughs> like a better experience of like life. So I might as well give up that identity for mm -hmm. the satisfaction. Uh, yeah, it's like there's that attachment to it, and then for those moments you're born as the victim, right? Or, yeah, but it's just like seeing through it and being like, yeah, you know what? Don't have to do that. That's a momentary thing, you know? But it'll come, you know, it sometimes comes back up. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to repeat myself, but yeah, well, I can relate to that because if once I see this victim, I also in, investigate into it, seeing the fears that come behind. Mm -hmm. it. It's usually it comes with a bundle of fears of you don't want to feel good because you're afraid of feeling good. You're afraid of being loved. You're afraid of nurturing yourself. It can be it can come from your childhood. It can come from a lot of things. They, those things actually don't matter. But it comes from that lack of love for yourself. You're you're not able to give love to yourself. It's almost like I'm, I'm not deserve it. Of the, I don't deserve this love. I don't. I, I, who am I to receive this love? You know, it's 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 sort of like a fear of of being different version of yourself, of being loving to you, yeah. towards yourself and yeah. others. It's a it's a it's a it's very harsh to to be loving to other people nowadays because we live in such a competitive society that you see this competitiveness everywhere. So 
love love is perceived as something as a weak weak trait oh if you're kind to others if you give money to others if you show respect to others you're you're weak so you build we build this identity that oh i cannot show any weakness in this society because i have to look strong i cannot i cannot love myself that's what i know it's like I, I see this all the time because I come from martial art backgrounds. I see these dudes in the gym who lift weights, who look really tough because they cannot give themselves some love. It's it's all it boils down to, like, you know, big boy problems. So I think one yeah. thing that you said, though, is you, you said we can look at our childhood and it doesn't really matter. It might not matter, but sometimes it's helpful to disidentify with it to see where these things come from a little bit. For me, at least, I find where I'm like, Wow, this thought that I'm having, I remember my mom really having these same worries, you know, and you kind of disidentify a little bit when you're like, wait a minute, like, this isn't totally me. Whenever I have money worries, I'm just like, oh, that's my mom right, right there, you know, and I can just see it immediately. And it's like, it, it, I just disidentify with the, th the thoughts a little bit, you know, because a lot, a lot of the thoughts that we have are not really mm -hmm. like coming from ourselves or our own you it know never is. yeah but, but what, what i meant it doesn't mean you, you're right it, it's good to see it you're just seeing it uh on more under microscope well i mean you can see it's dukkha and you can just show it out as far as that it doesn't yeah. matter you mm -hmm. already at expert level that you can see okay oh it's my mom boom out yeah <laughs> you're just yeah you don't need to dig really into hard it. right it. exactly yeah you don't need to dig into it because that's the other aspect of what modern people love doing as mm -hmm. being like Oh, I went through this when I was 12 and everybody wants to sit in a circle and talk about it for hours and you know and then you go back a year later yeah. and they're still talking about the same thing you know and yeah. it's like no yeah. you just you just see it and you're like oh that's that's that thing okay let drop that one mm -hmm. you know easy to see <laughs> moving on to the next one you yeah. know it almost feels like an act of violence to uh, let go of my victim that I've done to like I'm committing an act of violence on myself to um you, but you, you're, you're, you're going to have to keep from, doing it over and over again. Mm. You know, is that like it doesn't it doesn't ever yeah. permanently go away. That's it really keeps it keeps That's coming. Really yeah, it keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. And you keep having to remind I'm just yourself. To keep them back. Yeah. yeah. And you keep having to remind yourself that you're you're not the only one. Like it's not a one person battle. Like we're we're in this yeah. together, you know, <laughs> like, I'm not the only one, but there is only one way out, right? The victim that just leads to more victim that so there is only you know, yeah, and you have to bite the bullet and stop being a victim eventually and stop pitching yourself eventually no it's not eventually just just right now mm -hmm. right right now oh uh, i mean like as a i meant like to encourage myself to like do it yeah well i have to do that but it sounded a little bit hard it sounded a little bit harsh and unrealistic where it's yeah. like oh, you know, yeah. just, okay. just do it right now and you know and if yeah. if you fall into it again yeah. it's okay you know yeah like, yeah, yeah i think that's all right. yeah it it is helpful to like see when like perhaps rules are forming right and being like oh okay because like then yes, you, you know rules there are is, forming oh my yeah, god There'll be like this, uh, you know, self that is born into that. And, oh, there's this static image of myself yet again. Oh, no, I, I'm i not supposed to have that, you know, static image of myself ever. And it's like, wait a minute, that's just another static image of the self coming in, being born yet again. You know, rather than just, oh, isn't this wonderful to just be here now with the breath content satisfied you know that is just you know wonderful and so yeah and just to see the process see the process of that self being born right you know when there's a little baby robert coming up you know <laughs> yeah yeah little little rule maker getting, getting yeah yeah spawned, secretly. yeah you know what one thing that's been interesting for me in like like meeting Alex has been like really taking this like whatever works approach where it seems for Alex that what works for him is like he just talks to Don Murado every day, you know, and like... Badass as hell, man. Badass as hell. And like, I don't have the balls. I feel like I just bore him to death with like the same problems again and again. But it, but it works for Alex, you know, is that... I know, I kind of want to, though. Is that he's like... 
you know what? Like he's he's taken the the humbleness to be like, you know what? I know that we're supposed to be taking advice and going off on our own and you know doing this, but you know what? For me, I need to get reminded again. Like, hey, can you just repeat this one again for me, Domorado? And Domorado has all the patience in the world, you know. I mean, at, like, I mean, any practitioner who's gotten results from the path will also have that patience, mm -hmm. you know, and just repeat the same thing over and over yeah. and over again because they know how it is and they don't really care, you know, but sometimes th this one person battle thing, we're like sitting there and like, you know, you're, you're like, I got, I got to do this. I know what to do. I, I, I know what I'm supposed to do. And we don't have the humbleness to yeah. just reach out and be like, ah, just give Don Morado a call. And really, yeah, to I don't need just to sound be satisfied. I don't need to sound, yeah. I don't need to sound smart or have mm -hmm. a question for him. Or, or anybody else, you know, anybody else that you're friends with, you know, uh, or watch a Dharma talk or listen to a guided meditation or whatever it is that works, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Um, it's not like, okay, this is like training wheels and eventually I have to let these ones go, you know. Um, it has been a yeah. real change for me seeing this because I really used to be like anti-guided meditation because I used to think that you couldn't really see your own reality if you're listening to somebody telling you what you're supposed to be seeing. But I think it can well, be really helpful. That's a trippy thought, man. That's terrible. It comes back to enjoying the Dharma. Once you, once you like, once that's you're really into it, you enjoy. You you understand. You enjoy listening to. You enjoy talking about. You enjoy anything to do with it because it it, it is within you. So even if you watch the, it never gets boring. Like, when I watch, like, when you say when you use Alex's example, I I see that as well. Like, I watched like couple of videos of Alex and for me it's always a reminder like I, I, I don't have to go talk to Damrado I can just watch a video with somebody and I'll be like oh yeah that's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it you know yeah but there definitely is something too to the repetition when it comes to the practice right and it's just working these things in like over time you know because because I think that's the thing is that's there's true. Often, it takes yeah, time. Yeah, yeah there, it totally takes time to sink in. I mean, we want to brush and shit. I agree. Yeah, there's often that. Yeah, oh, ahead, I've already heard this. Time for something new. Time for you know the next thing. Because I've already heard this. I know it. But you know you I forget. Know yeah, yeah, yeah. It it gets forgotten, and so it's like, oh, that's a wonderful reminder just to hear it again. Like I mean, even say something like say the seven factors of awakening are brought up or whatever those can even just gladden the mind just being brought up right so this is a reminder of them right yeah i've got i've got notes hanging all around my house in different spots like above my sink and stuff like that with little reminders that are helpful you know and i i did that a long time ago and each time it never gets old like saying <laughs> the little the little mantra type thing you know that's to do with it just just a little just a little reminder you know some and it's it's funny sometimes i can see when like i get like i can really really see clearly when i'm really in a hindrance when i get angry at the note when i'm like <laughs> fuck that note you know and yeah. then i'm like oh well yeah. i'm really i'm really in a hindrance <laughs> I, I might want to go sit right now and take take a minute when i'm yeah getting, i'm getting ungrateful for the water that's coming out of the faucet <laughs> oh my god oh man Everything you guys just said, I relate to so much. Cool, guys. I'm going to shoot out while we're Okay. There. That was excellent. Really nice to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. See you guys. It's been great, man. Take Thank care. you for the advice. Really, really appreciate Take that. Guys. Thank you, man. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to have to shoot out too soon. Oh, okay. I'm going to do some meditation. <laughs>